friends. Welcome back. I was in a whispering mood today. And I haven't done very many whispering videos on the channel least not nearly enough or so I'm told so I wanted to uh, do something simple maybe a video where I could read a little bit when I think about reading I think about language, and I think about language as a prompt to think about the past. I was reminded that does much the same thing. Going all the way back to, for example, a Shakespeare play. Now that usage of language obviously is very, very different from modern usage. And perhaps that is an extreme example, but even going back a hundred years or so, there were differences. Differences in the way language was used, the way sentences were put together that are just different enough from the way we do things now that it it catches your ear and it feels different in the mouth when you say those words. And it's just enough to take us back and give us a glimpse of another time. We've talked about this before in some of the videos where we got to look at some older language uses like the wartime cookbook video or the life magazine video i have in front of me today a wonderful uh, pocket watch reference this came out in 1985, and it was compiled by a gentleman named Bill Meggers and Roy Erhardt. I believe they're, they are both passed away now, but they were big names in the watch collecting community, and their encyclopedias of watch collecting information really pushed the hobby along. This particular book is all about the Illinois Watch Company. 
and it's got wonderful information here for the collector, but the reason why we have it in front of us today is because it contains reproductions of old Illinois watch company advertising. And I love reading language from vintage advertising because that use of language as well as the the very declarative nature of of advertising in those days the the, the way words were chosen to help persuade I just I just think they're a delight and I thought it might be nice to whisper for a few minutes today and read through some of these vintage ads and see how they sound to us. Toss the words around in our ears and see what we think of them. So let's flip through a few pages here and see if we can find the oldest examples of some of this company's ads. First ones are here, up at the top of these pages, it says 1876 factory advertisement and 1878 factory advertisement. These would have been fairly early in the company's history because their first movements came out in very, very late 1871. This 
This movement is priced very low, yet everyone will be fully warranted. For sale by all the principal jobbers in the United States. And I believe jobbers is the term used for these middlemen companies that I was talking about. See, this company only made movements, but the jeweler who sells to the public wants to sell a completed watch. So I believe these jobbers were companies that would procure movements from watch companies and they would procure cases from case companies and put them together into final timepieces and then sell those to jewelers. Illinois Springfield Watch Company, manufacturers of key and stem winding movements. The above new and desirable grades are now being delivered and are furnished as above described or without grade trademarks and in such case being designated by the numbers one and two and engraved Illinois Springfield Watch Company. Improved old English dials have been added to the bun grade. Handsome double sunk old English dials to the Stewart grade making them especially attractive and desirable. This the trade will doubtless appreciate when taken in connection with their known timekeeping qualities. I love, I love, love, love this usage.
this reference to Illinois Watch Company signs. Boy, I would love to get my hands on some of those. I assume these would be little trade signs that would go up in uh, the jeweler's window and places like that. I would love to have a few of those. Announcement to the trade. The Illinois Watch Company announced to the trade that the following improvements have been added to their movements during the past year and are now upon watches going upon the market. All movements undergo a rigid inspection before leaving the factory and are warranted to be in perfect running order. It's fascinating to me that, you know, that they thought they had to say things like this. I mean, I guess it's, it, it goes to the, the manufacturing environment at the time and perhaps reputations or the perceptions of corners being cut by some companies. I don't know. I'm, speculating, but, you know, to think that you would actually have to tell people, yes, we're inspecting our work before we send it to you, and, and they'll be in good running order. You would assume that's just a, a basic expectation, right? Warranted to keep good time. Well regulated and in good running order. These are brand new movements that they're selling. And they've, they've said at least three times on this one page that if you buy one, it'll be in good running order. That's, that's amazing. This is an 1890 advertisement. I love, I love this artistic presentation of the, of the company name here. This, this artistic logo is, is fantastic. What's, what's even more interesting is that this text between this line and this line is, is a couple of readable sentences, even though they've, they've gone crazy with their fonts and their sizes and the artwork in here. Oh, this is interesting. I'll try to... These, these letters are pretty small from where I'm sitting, but I'll try to read this. To the retail watch dealers. We have tendered our resignation as co-operating manufacturers with the National Association of Jobbers in American watches, and we beg to advise the trade that they can now be supplied with our movements through our special jobbers. If dealers who have heretofore been unable to obtain our goods through association jobbers will write to any of our offices we will see that your orders are promptly filled. So that's interesting. It makes you wonder what the politics between the 
Justice, National Association of Jobbers, and and up-and-coming watch companies were, right? We saw them take a pot shot at older, larger companies in another ad. And now it looks like they had some sort of a disagreement with these jobbers. And, you know, they either weren't showing up in catalogs for the jewelers or there was some other um, impediment that Illinois perceived standing in the way of getting their goods to market. And they felt they had to stand up their own special jobbers in order to get through to the jewelers. I think that's very interesting. So these advertisements tell us a lot more than just what's happening with the products of the company. They're giving us insight into the liquid nature of the business climate, I suppose we could say. Your particular attention is directed to our present production of 18 size, accurately adjusted movements, hunting, open face, and key winders, in gilt and nickel. Our new model, 18 size, open face movements, in the very tiny word in right there. Pendant setting with straight line escapement are now on the market and the great demand for them is the best criterion of their merit and of the judgment of the trade concerning them. The Illinois Watch Company guarantee all movements made by them to be equal in every respect to those of any other manufacturer and solicit a comparison of similar grades. There's a lot going on in this one page. They packed a lot of editorial activity in this little paragraph here. This was from 1890. And here is an ad from 1896. The perfect watch, the new 18 size, thin model made by the Illinois Watch Company, Springfield, is now ready for delivery. The line of these movements is very complete, ranging from 11 to 21 jewels. Skipping a few sentences here. They will commend themselves in appearance, style, and finish to the high-grade retail trade. The number of entirely new and novel features in their construction will prove their surpassing merit to the practical watchmaker. And here's where it gets a little bit interesting. These movements are made for and will be sold direct to the legitimate retail jeweler. Jobbers do not carry them in stock, nor do they illustrate them in their catalogs. Scheme concerns and peddlers cannot obtain them and will not have them to sell. Our newly revised price list is now ready for distribution 
and will be sent to any legitimate jeweler on application, but they will not be issued indiscriminately. We would like to receive your mail orders, and they shall always receive our prompt attention. We shall be glad to have every dealer examine this new 16-size watch. We will send one to any reliable jeweler upon his request for his inspection and criticism. This is 1896, the previous one was 1890. So in 1890, the company had set up their own special jobbers to interface with the retail jewelers. And by 1896, it would appear that they had even bypassed their own, perhaps dissolved or rendered obsolete, their own special jobbers and are now trying to interact directly with the retail jeweler. Legitimate jeweler. Legitimate reliable jeweler. And references here to scheme concerns and peddlers. Illinois seemed to be fighting a constant battle to get their products into jeweler shops some, for some reason. It's interesting how much of that progression you can see just from what they decide to put in their advertising. It tells much more of a story than just, hey, here are the latest watches we have to sell. Adjusted temperature and six positions. Why offer your customers anything less than the best? They ask in 1914. Good question.
greatest railroad watch value ever offered. That's a pretty bold claim. The bun special of today, similar to previous models of this movement, is the pioneer and leader in the railroad watch field. A super timekeeper, having incorporated in its construction a motor barrel of special design with a mainspring sufficiently strong to run the watch for 60 hours on each winding. The most important improvement made in railroad watches in years. Six position bun special standard for all railroad service. Accurate pocket watches were a really big deal for safety on the railroad because there was no standard time established yet. So between accurate timepieces and the telegraph. These were the things that kept the trains on accurate schedules and kept them from crashing into each other. Well, here's, a, uh, here's a reference to cases. The special cases by Wadsworth that would be a case manufacturing company, were primarily designed and built to protect the fine movements within and are the result of their years of experience in the making of fine watch cases. We desire to emphasize the fact that the reputation and years of experience of this company in the making of fine watches are fully behind this new model, and we are pleased to recommend it as the highest grade 21 Jewel Railroad watch manufacturer. The 60-hour bun special will be found in the stock of reliable jewelers everywhere. Yep. Reading language like that is just like stepping back in time for a moment. Here's an example of uh, one of the many companies that were rebranded Illinois watches. You could get Illinois movements with many different names on them as a, as a contract. Santa Fe Watch Company was one of those. You can now buy the famous Bun Special Direct and save big money. It was still the same Illinois movement that we just read about, but it was branded as the Santa Fe Watch Company. That happened all the time.
section of the book that has diagrams of the movements and photographs of examples and what have you. But that's fine. I just wanted to spend a few minutes reading some of the wonderful language, some of the wonderful usage from these old ads. I was looking for something simple today, and uh, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing the, uh, the way some of this language was used for advertising, for making appeals to the trade. <laughs> Almost a hundred years ago. interesting that by reading between the lines a little bit we were able to figure out some things beyond just the the selling of some watch movements look like there was uh, there was a lot going on back then in terms of actually getting getting product to the market in what was perceived to be a fair way. Thanks for being with me today, friends, and thanks for letting me whisper to you a little bit. I, uh, I will try to do more whispering in the future, okay? Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.